Okay, great. You minimize this. Okay, so what we're going to go through today, as we talked about, was really using your resume, cover letter, and LinkedIn profile and how to maximize those materials to make a huge impact. And as we discussed, my name is Lindsay, and I'm a career coach and resume writer. So what we're going to go through today is the intro, resume best practices, effective cover letter, and leveraging LinkedIn for success. And then we can get into any closing remarks and questions at the end. So my name is Lindsay. And as we talked about, I've had seven years of experience as a career coach and resume writer. And how I got into this, I think, is a huge part of why I love what I do. I got into this to help people. And to be honest, I pretty much stumbled into this position. I was applying into pharmaceutical sales five, six years ago and really figured out what it is that recruiters want to see, hiring managers want to hear, and how to tailor my resume to get myself into a door where I wasn't qualified. I wasn't quite valued at that point. And I didn't necessarily have the credentials. And I was so told by recruiters to go sell printers first. So I learned everything that there is to know about um, exactly what we're going to talk about today. And I started, you know, this path and this journey doing resumes, cover letter, LinkedIn for free, for friends, for family. And now it has grown um, into a full business. So I'm really excited to share a lot about my um, expertise today. So why does a resume, cover letter, and LinkedIn matter? One, it's going to help you with faster job placement. This will help showcase your skills because let's be honest, they don't know you yet. You don't know them. So we need to show them what it is that you bring to the table. And it also helps make sure that you have an amazing first impression because we all know that first impressions are everything. And you've got one shot to make an impact. And honestly, probably about five to 10 seconds while they're perusing your resume to make a difference or even get through these ATS systems. So if you want those dream jobs and that dream career and a lot of success and more job offers, these three things are key. So first we're gonna dive into resume. So what you wanna first do is always focus on impact and results. And how we do that is we use bullet points strategically. So instead of saying in your bullet point responsible for dot, 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 we want to make sure that we showcase impact and results. And we'll get into that more later. The other key part is to tailor your content to the role. What I mean by that is go to the job posting and use their words and make sure that those buzzwords are on your resume. That said, you do want to be concise and each bullet point should never go past two lines. And we'll dump, jump into that more later, but you don't want a whole paragraph. You wanna leverage bullet points within those job bullet points uh, to make the impact there. Also, a structure is really important. You always wanna organize the information with your contact information at the top, summary, skills, work experience, and education and making sure that you use relevant information. So what that means is making sure that bullet points that matter most are at the top and then ones that aren't super heavy impact or maybe towards the bottom of that job. And education and certifications come after work experience unless they've come recently. So say for example, you're graduating in May, 2024, your education will come before your work experience if you have not worked. Then the other key thing, and I have been guilty of this, even when doing resumes for clients, I realized my spell check was not on. So take it from me, make sure your spell check feature is on in Word and that you are checking for typos because one wrong error can mean that they will ax your resume or your cover letter. The next key thing is a readable format. I feel like we've all seen formats that are either menu style, meaning there are two sections, um, not straight down, up and down, and those are difficult to read, and they're also not ATS friendly. We've also seen the people that use like to use the bright pink on their resume. We don't want to do that. We want to keep it professional, but also use dark blue features to help stand out, because just a black and white resume will not stand out. And last, the most important thing, in my opinion, is making sure you submit the resume and cover letter as a PDF, because what happens when you submit is a Word doc is you will basically, they can change the document. <laughs> You're gonna run the risk of them changing the document by accident. So save as your first and last name and resume or first and last name cover letter. 
And that way no changes can be made. And let's get into this a little bit more as far as the structure. So your name and contact info should go right at the top and your name needs to be larger than the rest of the resume. So I'm talking size 20, 25. And the other key part so many people don't do is they don't add their credentials right after their name. So BSN, RN, MD, PhD, whatever it may be right after their name. So comma and your credentials. And the other really great secret is to add a subheading. So what that would look like is adding in your specialties and headings. Um, you know, maybe registered nurse, managed care, EMR specialist, some of those things that you know you specialize in that'll make a difference. Now, as far as the skills sections go, we want to use hard and soft skills. So that means some technical skills such as EMR, right? And then soft skills, meaning in oral communication or patient focused. Um, work experience, I've been a lot, but you want to use action verbs and you want to use present tense or past tense, depending on when you've had the job. And certifications and education can actually be combined at the end if you need to save space, because remember, your resume should never exceed two pages. And if you have some room, you can add volunteer affiliations or interests at the end. I will say from experience, I put on a resume that someone was interested in traveling and in Peloton. And for the first 20 minutes of this interview with the CFO, all they did was talk about Peloton and she got the job. And <laughs> that was the final interview. So humanizing yourself can really help and making sure um, that you stand out. Now, how we wanna showcase these unique differentiators on our resume is we want to understand what it is that makes us unique. So I want you all to think right now, what are three key things that make you better and more unique than any other candidate? And I want you to be so confident in what it is that you bring to the table. And that's also what you wanna focus on in your interview. So by doing this work now, it's actually gonna help you a lot in your interview. That said, one of the best ways to format your bullet points is focusing on challenges, action, result. Because when you think about your interview, you're telling a story. And when you think about your resume, you have to condense that story down into two lines. So where you wanna focus is the action results. And that will actually help you in your interview and also help you get more uh, get a better offer as well because they can see just by your resume what it is that you bring to the table without even talking to you first and what that means is really focusing on the impact versus responsibility because nobody really cares what you've done they just want to know how you've saved the company money how you've helped patients how you've made an impact how you generated money what ideas you came up with because that means you can do that for them so how do I identify my differentiators and uncover my personal brand? Because at the end of the day, whether it's your cover letter, your resume, your LinkedIn, or your first day on that interview, you have to showcase your personal brand. And these are actually questions I ask clients all the time. And like I said earlier, what is it that you do better than anybody else? What makes you so unique? Is it because you're really passionate about patients? Why is it that you do what you do? What's your favorite part? What do people always come to you for? Even if it's in your personal life, that also always trickles into your life and work. And what is it that you're most proud of? So I want everyone to really think about a moment or an accomplishment throughout your career that you're really proud of. And that's probably gonna be an amazing example to use in your cover letter or your resume. These are really specific questions to help you uncover those accomplishments because what I've noticed the biggest mistake on resumes people make is they focus generally on, on general, uh, hey, I've helped 100 patients, and, and it was more general. We want to get specific about projects, about moments, about recognition. This is how you do it. You want to get very specific with these bullet points and not be so general and responsibility driven. So you have to ask yourself, what problems did you encounter and how did you overcome them? What did you do to make the company better, stronger, more competitive, more efficient? That's your opportunity to use some percentages or more profitable, which is your opportunity to use some dollar signs. How did you benefit other coworkers? How did you collaborate? How did you help patients? And what did you come up with or create that helped make your work more efficient? Those are the questions we always want to ask. And obviously, let's get to the bottom line here. People love, they need to save money. We're running businesses here. So how did you save money, cut costs, improve productivity, increase efficiency, and by how much? Again, getting as specific as possible 
And pro tip, you got to quantify. So wherever you can quantify, even if you're ballparking it, because let's be honest, they're not going to call those previous managers and ask for specifics. So if maybe you can't quite remember how many patients you took care of, but you're like 50, you could say 50 plus and keep it really simple. Or if you are, you know, you think that maybe you probably increased productivity by 10% and that sounds reasonable, you can put 10%. So you always want to quantify where you can to show impact and really help them understand the capacity of what you were handling and what you were doing. Proper resume verbiage is huge. And we're going to dive into this a lot right now, because like I just mentioned, you have to quantify accomplishments. You have to be really strong and decisive because every single word on your resume matters and counts. And if it doesn't and it's filler, get rid of it. <laughs> you don't need to fluff your resume. And you also want to make sure it's tailored to the role. So you want to highlight experiences that directly relate to the job posting. And they'll even tell you on the job posting what they're looking for. They're going to say seeking role or qualifications. And right under there, that's the bullet points they're looking for that you want to use on your resume to help you stand out. Here are some amazing bullet points that I have personally used for clients that will help make sure that you land these roles. And you can see here, it's exactly what we were just talking about. We have an action verb in the beginning. So spearheaded, collaborated, selected, consulted, developed, you get the point. And then you have maybe the system that you used or what it is that you did or how many patients you saw to help make that impact. And one of the biggest key things here is we're not just saying you helped patients. We're talking about how many patients and in what disease states did you focus on? One of my favorite bullet points is right here. It's developed and implemented a workflow process and policies to improve patient consultations, which reduce patient, reduce patient wait time from four months to four weeks without need for additional staff. So you can see right there, you might not think that that's a big deal that you created a new process, but it is. These are things that matter. Any awards, any recognition, that matters to people. And that matter to the company, that matter to the patients. You made an impact by implementing a new workflow process, maybe even a new EMR system you train somebody on. Those are the things that matter. And that is really what we want to focus on there as well. So some key skills. When you're in your resume, like I mentioned before, you need your name, your subheading, your contact information, then a summary. Right under that needs to be your skills section. So many people put your skills at the bottom of the resume or on the second page, but that's not helpful. You need it at the top because right when they look at your resume, they need to be able to say, what it is, what can they do to help me? They can take one look at your skill section and know you're qualified and move right on. That skill section is key. And for you specifically being medical professionals, these are some skills you want to name drop. So you can see here, we have a mix of some hard skills, which is a ACLS, uh, AED, EPIC, Cerner Software, EMR. Those are hard skills. HIPAA, hard skill. Now, the soft skills are critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork, collaboration, written and oral communication. Those are things every single person, every single hiring manager is going to want to see from you guys. So feel free to use these skills because they are going to be required of you and they're most likely going to even be in the job posting. And don't be shy to look at the job posting and see what it is that they're looking for and use those words as well in your skills section or even throughout your summary as well. Let's dive into cover letters. So your resume and your cover letter are going to get you in the door. I love cover letters. And the biggest question I get asked is, do cover letters even matter? Are they even relevant anymore? Does anybody read them? And the answer is yes. Because when you don't do a cover letter and it's optional, they could immediately ax your entire application just because you didn't take the time to do a cover letter and they might be testing you. The second reason it's really important to be done correctly is because when it's done incorrectly, it can hurt you. So I do not want you putting through an entire page, paragraph long cover letters. I promise you, no one's gonna read it because if you remember, nobody really cares what you've done. They just wanna know how you can help them. So your resume is all me, me, me. Your cover letters 
telling them what I can do for you and two or three key transferable skills and accomplishments that I want you to know that I've done that can help you as well when I get this job. It helps show your written communication skills and also make sure that it tells them, hey, I'm not lazy. I'm taking this seriously. So the format for your cover letter is the same. You want the same font size, your contact information all to look the same. And all it is is four simple, concise paragraphs to showcase your credentials, skills, and accomplishments. And the biggest thing I always say is if they're giving you the real estate to explain yourself, you might as well take advantage. Even if one of your paragraphs is talking all about how patient focused you are and why you are doing what you're doing. People love to hear that. And then you can carry that over in your interview and talk about how passionate you are about the position and excited you are for the position. Now, key tips. Like I said, we want to keep this concise. So what does that mean? Your first paragraph needs to talk about maybe three key transferable skills or your education, certifications, that background that you want to highlight to show them how confident you are in your ability to do the job. What that might sound like is one of your sentences could simply say, my career overview aligns well with the qualif qualifications you're seeking, and I'm confident I will make a valuable addition to the team. See how this is about them even more so? I'm talking about what we can do for the team. That is a great sentence to wrap up that first paragraph. Now, the second and third paragraph, I call it story time. These are probably going to be the examples that you're most proud of that you'd probably bring up in an interview. And it helps showcase, again, those transferable skills. And again, a great way to wrap up these paragraphs and these stories and to start it off is by saying, in my current role as exposition for insert company, I have honed my skills in critical care and demonstrated a capacity for managing complex patient cases. And then you get into three sentences to tell the story and share the impact. And then you move on to your fourth paragraph. Really simple. You thank them and you have a really strong close. And what that would sound like is saying, while my, my attached resume highlights my achievements, a personal interview will convey my well-spoken, professional, and unwavering work ethic that will ensure my success as a member of your team. Again, making it about them either in the beginning of the paragraph or at the end of the paragraph, or better yet, even both. Let's dive into LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a powerful tool. And a lot of the questions I always get and a lot of the comments I always get are people saying that LinkedIn is just another social media. I don't feel like it. I don't have one. I don't understand why we even need LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a super powerful tool because it can actually help you reach people that you know and also don't know to get jobs. Also reach recruiters. I have personally had clients where I've revamped their LinkedIn and next thing you know, recruiters come to them and they get jobs. My first question was, how did you get the job? Did you apply places? What did this look like? They never applied anywhere. They just had recruiters doing the work for them. That's their job. So when you update your profile with certifications, you maximize the skills section, you leverage the about section, it'll help people know who you are. Because let's be honest, no one has your resume in front of them. These are people that maybe work at the current company. So you want to build connections, build a network, add your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, previous employers, anyone you can think of to LinkedIn. And if you feel like it, it's obviously not required, but you can share articles, you can write comments, and you can even engage on recruiters post or engage on hiring managers post to get you jobs as well. So message recruiters, message hiring managers, let them know that you're available to work and that you're looking for that role or that you have applied to a job is going to help you get in the door. So LinkedIn is your online resume because not everybody has it in hand. We need to connect with as many people as possible. Now in the center here, I have key profile tips of things that I personally do for clients that'll make a world of difference in people understanding what it is that you bring to the table. First things first, professional headshot and cover photo. And I don't mean a picture of you cropped with your hands over someone. You know, you don't need it professionally done, but at the bare minimum, just take a picture in front of a wall. 
certifications, positions, and you need to max out your skills section. There's over 50 skills that you're allowed to add to your skills section that'll attract attention to your profile. Make sure you add them. Add in any awards, recognitions, memberships, publications. Your resume is your highlight reel, and this is your opportunity to dive even deeper and give them an understanding of the things that you could not fit on your resume. That's really important as well. The last key tip is there's a button on your LinkedIn that'll say open to work. And that button right there, you want to add in the areas that you're willing to work. If you're open to work right now, you can even add the banner across your profile photo. And that will allow recruiters and hiring managers to know that you're now ready to join the workforce and you can add in specific jobs that you want and titles. And that'll make a huge difference. So if you don't already have that on, make sure you go to the top of your profile. It's right underneath your headshot, right in that top part of your profile. It'll say open to work and you want to turn that on. Next is you need to leverage your network that you're building on LinkedIn. The last thing you should be doing right now is blindly applying. And luckily, you guys are in a pretty great industry where everybody really does need help right now versus tech, not too great, but you still don't want to blindly apply. You want to reach out to hiring managers, employees, and recruiters prior to applying to the job and let them know you're looking to apply. I want you to leverage current employees that work at that company and ask them for time. Say, hey, do you have 15 minutes of your time? Would love to learn more about the company, the culture, and your experience. And a lot of the times, if you ask at the end of that call, can you refer my resume in the system? They will do it. And that gives you a leg up into the entire company. And that way they're putting your resume in and also adding that as a referral. So it's an online platform that is essential for you to showcase what it is you can do and your story. This is actually an example of a LinkedIn profile that I completed for an RN BSN. What I think is so important is right here at the top, and so many people do not do this. If you look right here at the top, we actually have a whole cover photo of mountains. He loves the mountains. It gives people a good sense of what he's all about. Personally, I'm more of a beach person, so mine actually is a picture of the beach. It can be anything you want, but I love that. It could be a city skyline, but see how it makes the profile pop? Now, look at his profile photo. How professional does he look? You immediately, he's welcoming, you want to hire him. And then also we put right at the end of his name, BSNRN. So we're showing the credentials immediately. Then what I put under that is the subheading, which you can take directly from the resume with the subheading, patient focus, registered nurse, managed care, EMR specialist. Those are the things that people always want to see. And remember I referenced the open to work. You can see here, I have that turned on for him. And I have all the credentials or all the job titles he's looking to have. The other key part here is if you have more years of experience. So say, for example, you have five years of experience right in that subheading here where it says patient focused RN put five plus years of experience as a registered nurse. People will come to your profile. The second part that people always miss and it tells a lot about you is your about section. So this is a summary, just highlighting your clinical experience, patient care philosophy, and what it is that your expertise is. And also maybe even why you're doing what you're doing. And just really giving a summary of you as a person. So think about what it is, if someone were to describe you, what it is that they would say. And let them know what it is you're seeking to do for them as well. I'm seeking to contribute extensive expertise to a really dynamic and collaborative healthcare environment. And honestly, I put that right on his resume in his summary at the top, except I didn't use I or me or anything like that, just seeking to contribute extensive expertise. Here's the next section that's so important is your experience section. A lot of people really miss on this part because they don't take the time to elaborate right here on these bullet points. And again, these are action result bullet points. And why I love this is because people don't have your resume in front of them. So how can they know to take you seriously or what it is you can do for them unless you showcase this work experience here? 
So we always dive in a little bit deeper. Don't just post the job and just say, I'm done. I have the title. I have the position. Dive a little bit deeper. And also you can see here, I added 13 skills or more that were relevant to what he had done. And I will tell you right now what they say. It's going to say training employees. It's going to dive into his cross-functional experience, his ability to collaborate, communicate, EMR, EPIC, all of those skills I dropped right there so people know exactly what skills it is he mastered in that role. For you all, licenses and certifications are going to be huge. This is your place to put credential IDs, put it where it is that you received your certification, and also the title as well, and relevant coursework. There are so many sections you can add on LinkedIn that a lot of people always forget. That said, that is the presentation. I know we covered a lot, but we really focused on tailoring your resume, your cover letter, your LinkedIn profile, so that way you can show up as the best version of yourself. And if you have any questions, it is a judgment-free zone. There's no dumb questions. And you can always reach out to me after this presentation. That is my personal number there. You have my email as well as my social media and my website to reach out. But thank you all for attending this workshop. And I really do encourage you to implement these strategies or even reach out because a lot of the times it's really difficult to talk about yourself. And I can help uncover these key achievements and create the resume the LinkedIn, the cover letter for you, and also offer any interview prep or any career services you may need or just general advice, I'm here for you. Thank you so much, Lindsay. This was a wealth of information. I know I'm taking notes myself to learn how I can upgrade my resume when I do get back on the workforce. We do have one question from a participant, and it is, if you are in the process of getting a certification, should you put that on your resume? Yes. So what that would look like is saying anticipated. So you'll put the name of the certification or maybe the school you're in and you'll say anticipated colon month and year that you'll be receiving the certification. Absolutely include it because it could be something that's coming up in a couple of months and you need to let them know what it is that you're working on. But that's a great question. Thank you. I don't see any additional questions in the chat. So please feel free to post your questions in. I do have one from for myself at least, and hopefully others can can relate to this question. You mentioned pulling some buzzwords from a job description to add in your resume. A lot of times, I find that people just copy and paste, which isn't always the best strategy. You have to approach it from really looking at the job holistically and selecting the right words to choose. From your experience, how do you know which buzzwords to choose and add to your resume so you make it across at least the AI phase? Mm -hmm. It's really going through and they'll always give you responsibilities. They'll say, this is what the job's going to look like. Here's your responsibilities. To be honest, you don't want to look too deep into that because like I said, we always want to focus on impact. There's a couple key words they might have in there, um, but what you always want to do is go to the section right below that that's going to say key skills and qualifications required for the job. And those are the buzzwords. And usually that's really concise. But like I said, it's going to be those words and those buzzwords that they're looking for somebody in an employee. So if it looks like a filler word and it's not that important, don't worry about it. But if it looks like it's directly related to the responsibilities listed above, absolutely make sure it's in your resume, anywhere in your resume at any point, but just make sure that word is in there to help get you through the ATS system and make sure you're checking their boxes. Thank you. I see we have a couple more questions coming in. Um, we have one from the participant that asks, if your previous working experience has nothing to do with the job you're applying for, what can you do? That can be tricky. So sometimes you need more experience on there that fills your resume. Because if maybe you've only had one job that applies to medical, you might need the serving job, right? You might need those jobs. But my biggest question to you is, did you make an impact at that job? How long were you there? Did it show loyalty? Did it show you were there for a long time? And what transferable skills do you have from that job that will help you in this new job? So for example, I was a server at one point in the summertime, and I didn't add that to my resume because I had other positions I could add that were more impactful within that one page. But 
somebody else that's maybe trying to get into a position and they don't have other experience, that is a really great position to add on there because there's so many transferable skills. I mean, that's people skills, that's customer service, that's multitasking. There's so much that goes into it. It's sales actually as well. So when you really think about it, you have to ask yourself, what type of skills did I bring to the table? What types of problems did I solve? What type of impact I had? And you can feel free to even email me, message me, text me, and I can help you out with that one off. I'd be happy to. Thank you. Uh, for this next question, you sort of touched on it with your previous answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. This um, participant says, I'm a pre-med student and I'm looking for a medical scribe job to gain clinical experience. I haven't had a job before, but I am medical scribe certified. How do I showcase my skills on a resume if I haven't had a job before? So no, no job before. What you really want to do there if you haven't had any job at all is showcase your education and your certifications. And I would take the skills from that job posting. So I'd find any job posting if there's not one you're really looking for yet. And I'd make sure that you have those skills that they're looking for. And I would really leverage a cover letter to explain maybe why you haven't had a position um, and why you haven't had that work experience. And then also maybe too, if you can try to go out and get that extra work experience, that'll help you get that job. If you feel like you're underqualified, maybe even go pick up a part-time job. But I, I'd be curious if there has been even one position that you thought was no big deal that could be added um, to make sure that we kind of have enough space. Because that work experience is pretty essential for job applications, but it's not always required for a lot. So I'd look at the requirements and make sure that whatever the requirements are, you're checking the box through your certifications and through other experience that you may have, or maybe even your education. I dive into your education as well and think what extracurriculars did you do? What type of positions did you hold? Were you affiliated with anything? Did you have any internships at that point? Those are things that I would add as well and leverage leadership roles, even fraternity sororities, like we're in those things for a reason to build a network, to show leadership. So that can help you there as well. Thank you. Um, another question asks, is there a disadvantage for those who receive medical certification online? I don't believe so. No, I, and, and I think in today's world, especially with COVID, I think a lot is online and virtual. Now it's how you showcase what it is you achieved virtually that will matter. But I do not see that being a disadvantage, even if it's undergrad. So many people are getting things online right now and certifications online that being in person it doesn't matter. It's, it's it's honestly a preference and a convenience. It's the only reason why people would do things virtually. It's convenient and it's a preference and uh, they have other things going on. So people do understand the virtual environment at this point. Thank you. I do not see any other questions in the chat or the Q&A bar. Oh, looks like one just came in. Um, I recently graduated from college and will begin the job searching process as soon as my gap year ends. Would it be a good idea to make a LinkedIn right now or wait until I have more experience working in the real world? I would add your LinkedIn now. If anybody does not have a LinkedIn, I would encourage you to go sign up for one today. The reason being is it's never too early to start building that network and building that environment and curating and connecting with recruiters and connecting with people at different companies. And that way, when the position does open, you're ready. It's all about being prepared. If you fail to prepare, you'll, you'll, you'll fail. You need to prepare. And I think that that'll be a huge part of your success is starting that now because it does take a long time to get a job and it can take a while. So the sooner that you start doing the work, making the connections, the better you'll be. And I think this applies to all of these questions as well. This is huge. I want everyone to make sure you have letter of recommendations, whether that's from a professor, a previous manager, and you need to at least have one or two of these recommendations. This will help your job application, especially once you get in the door. If they don't ask for it in the application, when you get into the door, they will. you can pull that through with your interview and you can send it in your follow-up email as a thank you and say, this is attached because you can say whatever it is that you want about your great work ethic or how amazing you are. But when someone else says it on your behalf, it's going to help you get in the door because it has a lot more weight and a lot more leverage and it helps validate everything that you're saying. So this could help 
whether you haven't had a job, maybe that person can go to their professor and ask for that letter of recommendation. So leverage people that you know, even outside of LinkedIn and have people also endorse you on LinkedIn. So that's your virtual letter of recommendation. It's called an endorsement. And I encourage all of you to ask people to endorse you on there. It'd be kind of awkward, just like it can be kind of awkward to reach out to hiring managers or employees on LinkedIn. But I promise the more you do it, the better you'll be and the more confident you'll be in, in doing that. Thank you. And speaking of letters of recommendation, I know it can be awkward asking from strangers or people you haven't worked with in the past. What are your thoughts about that? Any tips, recommendations you can share with our audience? My biggest piece of advice, and this is true in negotiating and in this answer, a closed mouth does not get fed. So if you don't ask, you won't receive. My biggest piece of advice is reach out to them on LinkedIn, their phone number, their email, whichever way you can connect with them and ask them. Mostly it's going to have to be somebody, you know, for a letter of recommendation, like a full blown letter, but for just asking for a referral, you can ask strangers that no problem. Once you talk to them and they realize how great you are, tell them a little bit when you talk to them for those 15 minutes and get them to understand what it is that you can bring to the table and they'll happily refer you. But letter of recommendation should come from people that you know previously or have worked with previously. Thank you. Any other questions from our audience? I think we've gone through all the questions we have in the Q&A bar. Okay, great. And as a cherry on top, I really would love to show you the format because I think I'm visual and I have this extra slide. And if you are not born in the 90s or maybe early 2000s, you might not know who Slim Shady is, but that's Eminem and he's the best. But this is actually the format I'm talking about. This pulls it together. And everything I just said is really right here within this format. So if you would like me to send this to you, I'd be happy to share this with Janie and she can send this to you all. This is the format we're talking about. It's concise. It's to the point. We use dark blue and black to help you stand out. We have education and certifications towards the bottom, unless you've had them sooner. We have the hard skills, soft skills that are going to be listed under that section. We're using no more than four lines in the summary. We have all the contact information right at the top. And as well, same thing goes for your cover letter. Remember how I said how concise this can be? That's how simple your cover letter can be. It can even be a couple lines longer than this on the center paragraphs, on the second and third paragraph. But this right here is gold. And the other part that I love that no one else is doing is putting this subheader right here. Patient registered or you know whatever it may be your title, seeking to leverage clinical background, right? These things help you stand out immediately. And you can see what it is that you bring to the table, what it is you want to do for them. And it says, hey, here's what I've learned as well throughout these experiences. So this is a cover letter and also a resume format I'd be happy to send and share with you all as a thank you for joining today. And if you would like it, just feel free to reach out to Janie and we can get that connected for you. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And thank you all so much for joining today's session. I found a lot of valuable information and I hope you all did as well. I don't see any additional questions in the chat so we can close out for today. Thanks so much again for your time. And we hope to see you all at our next webinar. Thank you thank all. You. Have a great weekend, everybody. And feel free to reach out if you need anything. Thanks. Bye.